What's going on everyone? You're welcome once again to David Data Channel. On today's video, we're going to be learning how to create a custom Airbyte connector for your API source. So let's say you want to extract some data from an API connection and that connector does not already exist on Airbyte. With the Airbyte UI, you could create that custom connector for your API source. And in case you're just hearing Airbyte for the first time, Airbyte is a tool used for extraction and loading. You can check out the video I made on Airbyte in the link above and the link in the description below as well. If it is your first time as well, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button and also the notification bell, especially if you get something out of this video. All right, so let's jump into my screen right now as I walk you through on how to get this stuff done on Airbyte. All right. All right, so this is the Airbyte documentation on creating your custom connector using the connector builder. All right, so let's go to Airbyte. This is our Airbyte um, homepage, right? So we're going to click on the builder tab. You have your connection that shows your connection, your connect, your connections, your sources defined, your destinations defined, and then our builder. So we're going to click on create new custom connector. So you can do this using the YAML file. You can load from an existing connector and try to modify that connector and then um, like to improve on it to use it to as a foundation to build your connector or you can start from scratch and we're going to start from scratch so we're going to call this aviation um aviation api um this is the api we're going to be using this aviation stack api i signed up for a free access right so this is my api key but after this um video i'm going to just reset that api key yeah so um okay all right so these are the endpoints available real-time flights historic flights airport routes airports airlines we're going to try to probably bring in all these um end endpoints so um the base url for our guy is this https guy so this comes in as our endpoints as our base url authentication would be api key so let's call this header name access key, right? Um, so next thing is to do is to create a stream. Your stream, otherwise refer, you can refer to this as your endpoints as well. A stream defines how requests are made to a single endpoint to fetch data and how the data gets translated into records, right? Okay. So our first, um, our first stream, we're going to call it flights. So we're going to pick flights data. So let's take the remaining part of flights the flight api call and um yeah this is what it is okay so the next thing is to test so we're going to put in the api key and then test this is my api key on my account right but no don't worry as that when you're watching this video it has been reset already so i don't worry about so let's test this and see Okay, it says you have not supplied an API access key required format access key, your access key. Okay, so um, I think we have to add a parameter. Um, we need to add a parameter, right? So let's come on here. We'll call this parameter access key, and then and the value would be this. Okay. Let's test it again. Okay, access granted, but now it says that um, access restricted. Your current subscription plan does not support HTTPS encryption. All right, so it's just tutorial, so I don't need to pay for a, okay. Okay, customers who have a higher plan can use HTTPS. Otherwise, I use HTTP. So I'm gonna go back to our global configuration and change our base URL to HTTP. And then I'm gonna test again. Oh, awesome! So this is our guy. So there's the pagination, um, like how the P API pages comes in. Um, count is hundred. Total record is this. So we're just gonna get. We're all interested in this data. So I'm going to make my my record selector to only select the record called data. The list called data and um primary key if flight date flight status departure departure information arrival airline flights um 
Can I tell the primary key? I don't think I can tell the primary key yet. So we'll just leave this as it is. And then, yeah. Basically, this is how you create your endpoint. So let's add another endpoint. Uh, okay. Alright, yeah. So the version one, I'm going to use it data again and then test. So we're going to do the same thing for the others. So interesting thing, so if you wanted to make, okay, primary key here should be ID. Yeah, you can get that. And then if you wanted to make any of your, any of your streams incremental, you can actually set it from here yeah, for incremental sync. All right. Um, so, all right, so let's add one more. Let's bring in cities. Let's bring in cities. Cities. Yep. Let's test. So this works well. Okay, so we have our data in here. So let's um, save this, publish the workspace. Okay. So let's go to, um, let's add this as a, as a source and create a connector to our Postgres to pull in data from this API. We call it aviation here. So you asking for my API key. So if you're doing this in production, you know, like one of these variables to capture all this information. Okay, connection test passed. So let's create a connection. Let's connect to our Postgres local database. Okay. Frequency every 24 hours. Let's just leave the naming as it is. Um, let's turn on our sync. Destination schema name, airport city flight, full refresh overwrite. Let's do a full refresh append each time it comes up. Okay. So, do we want to do we want to normalize this or let's leave it raw? Probably normalize this with DBC. Yeah. All right. So we want to replicate our data. We want to do it as raw JSON, right? So we're going to save this change. Um, um, what else do we want to change? Replication method. Okay, destination namespace. It is going to public schema. Um, so I'm going to call this edition. Okay. Okay. So we are good. So we're going to just save these changes and run again. So this time, um, we are enable this and um, sync. Okay, it's currently running right now. All right, so our sync is completed, 300 record sync. Let's check our database and let's refresh. All right, so this is our schema. Can I rename this guy? So we have our raw tables in here. Yep. So
So it's in JSON, and we're gonna work on, and um, <laughs> thought I was writing SQL SQL Server. I mean, all right. So we have our JSON data just to nest this. All right. So thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a thing or two out of this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Catch you again in the next video. Bye bye.